Nightcrawler is a film that was released in October of 2014. It was written by Dan Gilroy and is also Dan Gilroy's directorial debut. And for a directorial debut, I must say that I think the film is quite good. Nightcrawler stars Jake Gyllenhaal as Louis or Lou Bloom and co-stars Dan Gilroy's wife, Renee Russo. Jake Gyllenhaal allegedly lost around 20 pounds for the role, which helped him transform into the intense and calculated Lou Bloom and give what is arguably the best performance of his career to date. Finding a proper synopsis of Nightcrawler turned out to be a cumbersome task. That is, the synopsis on Fandango and the synopsis on IMDb both contained editorial language that makes the main character and the film in general seem slanted in varying directions that are completely reliant on an individual's subjective interpretation. For instance, Fandango's synopsis reads, An ambitious young crime journalist probes the dark underbelly of LA in this cynical urban drama. The synopsis further labels Lou Bloom a petty thief in search of a payday. The synopsis on IMDb, on the other hand, using more neutral language, reads, Nightcrawler is a thriller set in the nocturnal underbelly of contemporary Los Angeles. In regards to Lou Bloom, this synopsis calls him a driven young man desperate for work. Note that while both synopses reference Lou's ambitious nature, one posits the protagonist as a petty thief in search of a payday, and the other regards him as a driven young man desperate for work. The Fandango synopsis appears to be a bit more damning, while the IMDb synopsis is a bit more compassionate. Now, before I get into diagnosing Lou, I'd like to use this opportunity to briefly explore a common misconception that seems to exist in pop culture. This might seem a bit tangential, but it will make more sense as the video unfolds. You don't have to look very far into this film, be it in interviews or on internet forums, before you hear someone call Lou a sociopath or a psychopath. First, I'd like to point out that diagnosing someone with a mental condition is not something we should be so quick to do after taking a brief glance at their behavior. Second, diagnosing someone with a mental condition is not something that should be haphazardly carried out by folks who have no formal psychological training. Third, there are varying opinions of what sociopaths and psychopaths actually look like in terms of their behavior. In pop culture, many people seem to use sociopath and or psychopath interchangeably to describe a sort of maniacal genius who is charismatic and morally insane. Others use sociopath and or psychopath to simply mean crazy person. To some, sociopath and psychopath are two terms that mean the same thing. To others, there are stark differences between these two conditions. To further complicate the issue, not all psychologists and or psychiatrists agree in regards to how these pathological conditions manifest. Like in the general public, some think the terms are one and the same, while others find them to be succinctly different. A good example and unfortunate contributor to this confusion is the BBC 2010 Sherlock Holmes adaptation starring Benedict Cabbage Patch. Here are some examples of Sherlock Holmes referring to himself as a sociopath and differentiating between psychopathy and sociopathy. We found it in the hands of our favorite psychopath. I'm not a psychopath, Anderson. I'm a high-functioning sociopath. Do your research. Oh, do your research. I'm not a hero. I'm a high-functioning sociopath. Bloody psychopath. High-functioning sociopath. With your number. This was refuted by a psychologist that argued that Sherlock was not a sociopath and that sociopathy and psychopathy are actually the same thing. Now, I'm not going to cover the long history of sociopathy or psychopathy as that would be outside the scope of this video. I can say that neither condition is a recognizable diagnosis in the DSM-5. However, just because these conditions do not exist as diagnosable conditions in the current DSM-5 does not mean that they are not real. It's important, however, to point out that the creator of this video will be using the DSM-5 to diagnose Lou Bloom. I'm not arguing that the DSM should be used as gospel, but it is a widespread diagnostic standard utilized in many mental health settings. It gives us a good starting place or framework to get the proverbial ball rolling. That said, psychopath and sociopath are briefly mentioned in at least two places in the DSM-5 under the antisocial personality disorder section. So, does Lou Bloom have antisocial personality disorder? Let's take a look. Antisocial Personality Disorder A. A pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others, occurring since age 15 as indicated by three or more of the following. A1. Failure to conform to social norms with respect to lawful behaviors as indicated by repeatedly performing acts that are grounds for arrest. happened is I 2500 and that's giving it away
I think you withheld information. One of the people in the house last night was alive. I cut that part out. I also cut out the men leaving in their car. A2. Deceitfulness, as indicated by repeated lying, use of aliases, or conning others for personal profit or pleasure. This is a custom racing bicycle, sir, designed for competitive road cycling. This bike has a lightweight space-age carbon frame and handlebars positioned to put the rider in a more aerodynamic posture. It also has micro shifters and 37 gears and weighs under six pounds. I won the Tour de Mexico on this bike. I want that. With you. Like you want to keep your job and your health insurance. You want something, and I want you. To fuck you. And as a friend. Jesus Christ, friends don't pressure friends to fucking sleep with them. Actually, that's not true, Nina. Because as I'm sure you know, a friend is a gift you give yourself. I run a successful TV news business. We film breaking stories. And what does it pay? It's an internship. You've been asking a lot about your performance review? Yeah. Well, for starters, I've been seeing a great improvement in your overall focus and order, Father. Given complex problems, you're developing a real ability to find clear and simple solutions. I'm also aware of your increased enthusiasm. It's great to see your eyes light up when you're working on a new idea. I hope you'll be inspiring us with your innovative thinking for years to come. Hello, Juliana. Hello, Willie. Hello, Ben. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Hey, it's Lou, right? Yes, that's right. Video news. That's right. Yes. You got something good for us tonight? I think so. I'm about to show Nina right now. I can tell by your tie, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> What happened in there? You should have walked in and looked, Rick. If you're curious, that's what I'm paying you to do. You need to show initiative. There is no better way to achieve job security than by making yourself an indispensable employee. I heard gunshots. All the more reason you might have helped me. You might have learned a new skill that made you more useful and put us on a track toward growth. A3, impulsivity or failure to plan ahead. A4, irritability and aggressiveness as indicated by repeated physical fights or assaults. What if I was obliged to hurt you for something like this? I mean, physically. I feel like grabbing you by your ears right now and screaming in your face, I'm not fucking interested. Now, when I say that I want these things. I mean that I want them, and I don't want to have to ask again. And the last thing that I want, Nina, is for you to do the things that I ask you to do when we're alone together in your apartment, not like the last time. A5, reckless disregard for safety of self or others. There's fucking people in there. I count six. So they could start shooting. They could. He's dead. Get this shot. A6. Consistent irresponsibility as indicated by repeated failure to sustain consistent work behavior or honor financial obligations. Mm. 
A7. Lack of remorse, as indicated by being indifferent to or rationalizing having hurt, mistreated, or stolen from another. Wasn't that your partner? As a matter of fact, that's him. Oh, I'm floored. I mean, it's amazing. Thank you. I mean, just amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you for bringing it to me. You're welcome. I want it, obviously. Hey, hey, don't film that, man. He's one of us. Not anymore, Rick. We're professionals. He's a sale. Will this be on television? Morning news. If it bleeds, it leads. What channel? Whoever pays the most. I don't think it's any secret that I've single-handedly raised the unit price of your ratings book. I can only imagine that your needs will increase during next month's rating sweeps period. I think Lou is inspiring all of us to reach a little higher. You gotta bring people in, Lou, seriously. You gotta talk to them like they're fucking human beings. I'm saying this for you, dude, for the future to help you. Cause you gotta seriously weird ass way of looking at shit. You know you do. <laughs> you know what your trouble is, man? You don't fucking understand people. What if my problem wasn't that I don't understand people, but that I don't like them? B. The individual is at least 18 years old. C. There is evidence of conduct disorder with onset before age 15 years. There is no real information about Lou's childhood contained in the film. Therefore, we don't know. However, a wise man once said, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So, just because we don't have any information about his childhood doesn't mean that Lou wasn't diagnosed with conduct disorder. Still, because we don't have the evidence, we cannot say in good faith that Lou meets diagnostic criterion C. D. The occurrence of antisocial behavior is not exclusive during the course of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. So, in conclusion, does Lou Bloom have antisocial personality disorder? Well, on a continuum of antisocial personality disorder likelihood, I'd put Lou right about here. We don't know for certain that he has antisocial personality disorder, but he probably has antisocial personality disorder. <laughs>